I guess we all knew it would happen eventually. <laughs> Me, painting the Brian. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so uh, here let me tell you why I think that uh, portraits are an important thing to study um, for any type of art, no matter what type of artist you are. Uh, I'm a fantasy artist. I work with creature design and alien concepts, but all of these need a grounding in reality. And you need to be able to recognize whether something is working and I think that uh, doing portrait studies, when you, when you consider what goes into a portrait, the face, the human face, is, an ob is a subject that we know so well. We spend so much of our waking life looking at other faces that we can be extremely critical of the accuracy of our observations so no matter what the subject is that we prefer to draw or paint portraiture really teaches us to observe with a with a very well-trained critical eye and that's why i think that portraiture is one of the best subjects that you can actually um, practice with uh, regardless of your actual preference in what you choose to paint simply because of how much it will teach you and hone your observational skills and that's that's it that's the upshot i teach portraiture based on those ideas and uh, people get a lot of enjoyment from them um, I work in my sketchbook, so I can also play around with stylization, like I'm doing right now. The pencil drawing uh, is how I usually start my portraits, um, but I had a little bit of time to kill, and so I thought I'd just play around with the biro and see what uh, see what that did for me. And that's one of the beauties of working in the sketchbook, and it starts to build that idea of interpretation. How would we interpret somebody's portrait? Now that said, this particular video, of course, is more about the painting, uh, which uh, we'll go on to now. I absolutely love this step. It's, uh, it, it terrifies the, uh, the people I teach. Um, but I love this step because we get to make a mess. We get to play kids. We get to just let go and be expressive and just see what happens on the canvas. Um, technically speaking, this is a tiling approach and tiling, uh, the tiling technique revolves around the idea of no blending, just mix color and lay a swatch of that color down in roughly the right place and then just keep moving around the face mixing fresh color mixing other colors and you're looking to really get a saturated underpainting that um, that is quite aggressive in the mark making but i always recommend get a richer version of the color uh, so slightly more saturated than what you want the finished look to uh, to to look like and the reason for this is is because skin ultimately is a very translucent material it's very subject to the conditions of the ambient light sources that are around it it's subject to the temperature and that causes variable shifts in the in the coloration of skin which is why there's no one formula for all types of skin um and what we're trying to do is play with the the uh the temperature shifts that we see in skin and its translucency and that's why i feel painting a richer color or a more saturated color as the underpainting allows us then to knock that back and suggests the translucency of skin.
and we want to get that skin in context as well so we want to make sure that we eliminate the rest of the canvas the white of the canvas and block in what color we need uh, as a as a base now once that rough blocking is done we can go in and start refining some of the edges and this generally revolves around mixing a kind of transitionary color between the two edges uh, where they where they come together we lay a gestural brush mark down with that transitionary color over the edge where the two edges meet and that will knock back that edge it will soften it out and we do that in all of the places where we feel that it needs softening. And this is, of course, individual interpretation. <laughs> now, I'm quite sure you all know why I was uh, excited to have a crack at Brian May, both for the people who I teach and for myself as well. Uh, and that is, of course, painting that hair. Uh, in the reference photo uh, that I found on Google, um, the uh the, obviously brian may here is on stage so he's being uh lit by very strong colored light so we've got some real strong color going on in the in the skin tones but as with my own hair the uh light it, it almost illuminates the, the uh the, the pale grays of the uh the hair and this voluminous uh mass of tangled curls is um is going to be really good fun to paint and so you can see here i'm going in with a pure titanium white and i'm really sort of twisting and twirling the brush to get that gestural uh curly mark uh to uh, to start laying down the foundation of the mass that is hair and this is how we start with um hair in general is to lay down what is ever is going to be the very darkest color of the hair and in this instance it's that very pale bluish green sort of color and then we want to start blocking it in the general passage of the hair and that's being done here with the titanium white and the reason is is we want it to look illuminated so we're going to glaze over this a few times and build up the structure of the hair over a number of subsequent layers of paint basically uh, mark makers if we were um, writing imaginary words if you can imagine with a with a little bit of a, a curliness to them and that will give us the uh, the nice gestural marks that will make up Brian May's hair uh, in this instance I think that once you've got the structure of your painting blocked in with color and some gestural brush mark you are then ready to just keep refining that you're working from intuition you're working from your own understanding of of what pleases your eye um and the, and it, it just because i'm showing a portrait here doesn't mean that the a different principle applies to painting a dragon a mermaid a landscape or or any other type of painting you just play at this point uh, with what you know, what you want to bring into the painting and just keep refining because at this stage you really can't uh, ruin the painting. You're just having fun with all of the important structure that you've already put in. And the importance of that structure comes from the fact that uh, from a, a point of observation, faces are one of the things that we know best and so we can be most self-critical and i don't mean that in a bad negative way i mean we can be critical of our inaccuracies of observation and the accuracy of our observation and the subsequent interpretation of that observation is what makes us an artist and that's true for any form of art painting music writing all of them so thanks i hope you enjoyed it <laughs> what Five quid. <laughs> yep.
so I've just got back from the uh, local uh, car boot sale uh, and uh, there was a guy there got this on the table I said to him how much and he said a fiver I was like I'll have that <clears throat> anyway as you can see there are a few bits missing this thing keeps popping off uh, some stuff missing here obviously missing here uh, bits missing from the bottom as well I think and it looks like there's definitely panels missing from the inside as well that said he said uh, to take a look over there you might find a few of the panels and this is what he had <laughs> this lot A mountain of old, all knackered and busted uh, pieces for Star Wars. There's an entire set of Atat legs in here. You know, full set. Part ships. You know. This one. And, and just tons and tons of panels, of bits. that in and of their own are probably not that great. But it got me to thinking about making uh, Imperial um, shipyard, uh, you know, a scrapyard, a derelict uh, place of, uh, of old machinery, <clears throat> making a full board of, out of all of this stuff. Uh, which I think would be a super cool board. <laughs> uh, excuse the plane going over. Um, I do have uh, one problem with that, and that is I don't actually play any Star Wars um, skirmish games as yet. I've looked at Legion a couple of times, and maybe now with this it's time to pick that up. Um, I don't know if you guys know of any other Star Wars skirmish games out there uh, that could be of interest. Um, you know, but I mean, in theory, you could play Stargrave over this board. You could even play 40k over it, really, you know, if, when it comes down to it. Just because they're from different universes, I don't think it really matters as long as it's a cool looking board. Um, um, but yeah, the. Um, oh. Dinosaur. <laughs> Maybe not put that in. Um, but yeah, the Falcon. Um, I've always really fancied a big model of the Falcon to actually hang. And I had considered making it the sort of the final graveyard of the Falcon and make that the kind of central feature piece um, in the uh, in the board. But I might have a crack at restoring it. I don't actually know who the manufacturer is. Bondi, maybe. It's a, it's a toy. I can't see a manufacturer on it. If any of you guys think you know, I'm obviously going to do my bit of research um, to find out. But um, well, if any of you guys actually know who the manufacturer might have been then please uh, pop that down in the comments. It's a project, all of this, it's a project that I'm not gonna be get go, getting going on in the near future, um, although I'm quite excited to get going on it, so it may usurp a few other projects I've got in mind. But what a cracking find. I'm really happy with the find. Let me know what you think. If you have any ideas as well, put them down in the comments. For now, this lot's got to go into storage, whilst I dream of the days when it's been built, and dream of the days when it's been played on. See you in a bit. Hey guys, so it is uh, a, my first convention, Comic Con, coming up. 
where I'm going to be attending, and that's Megacon in Birmingham, which, by the time you see this, will have actually have taken place. Um, but <laughs> that said, I am getting ready for it. I've got some prints to... Uh, they need their UV varnish, so that's my task for today. Uh, they're all sort of spread around me on the floor here, um, ready to uh, ready to take with me. So these are my uh, my canvases. Uh, just here you can see uh, my Gawain in the Green Knight, which is part of the World War Fay origins um, story that I'm adapting slowly uh, to my own epic. And I've got some older work here as well, uh, which uh, is Tana, who, that I mentioned in my last Monday montage. And um, and then an older piece, which is my Opium Dreams fairy. Uh, so there, yeah, there we go. Lots of fairy stuff. Um, let's hope it goes down well at a Comic Con. We'll w wait and see, eh? Yeah, okay. So I'm going to crack on with my brush and varnish and uh, and get these done. Okay, we are here ready to set up and I've got a massively bigger space than what I was expecting. I hope I'm not understocked. Uh, but I'm going to start putting up now. So ready for tomorrow. Megacon. Wow. Okay. Here's the stand. See the kind of space we've got. It's huge. It's going to be a big event. I mean it really is my biggest. So I've got my wall of images on the back here. I think I'm liking having this corner spot so people can get a blast of uh, my work before they kind of hit the stool. All the prints are here. Got to, I've got to figure out how to display more prints in a small space. Don't like the fact that they're overlapping. Some canvases at the back. I'm going to be bringing a couple of originals with me tomorrow. So there we are. And then here on the other side, here's my World War Fay bit of blurb. Get people excited about World War Fay. Wow. Looks small now. In the in the camera, it looks small. This huge space, it looks small.